well. And I'm sitting and I practice ahead of time. So I'm going to get it. Left Terrace. Hello. And Iraklis. All right. See, that's why I write it phonetically. Okay, I know. Click. I'm, I'm, I'm working on it. <laughs> and you guys have brought us the um, fabulously boxed and, and beautifully imaged Autocratter. Yeah, I mean, right. this is with definitely one of those covers. You see it, and mm -hmm. it looks like a painting. Yeah, they did a really good job. Uh, I know, I games. know. The they art illustrators, not me. The illustrators. I, yeah. <laughs> but that's okay. We'll give the illustrators. Okay. But you did work on the board, didn't yes, you? I, yes, I designed the board. I designed oh, the board. Oh yeah. wow! Which you know, and I love when we get designers who also do some graphic design as well, yes. because mm -hmm. then then it really is your vision too. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. That's right. Well, let's start with a few basics. How many players? Four players. Four, uh, only four or yes. up to? Yes. Up to four. Up to four. Okay, so what, two to four then? The, you can play with two players, but it's not very complexity. So we do not suggest it, and uh, we say that uh, only really for four players. Four is the way to go. Because it's something different. Okay. And also because of the way the map works, the yes. game has been balanced before. Wrong it's not going to be a bad game, but you're not going to uh, experience the full uh, definitely a, a, a better game before. Yes, uh, definitely. <laughs> and then how long would it would have been a typical four-player game? Probably 90 minutes maximum. All right, so a nice medium amount. Yeah. All right, why don't you kind of walk us through the different parts here that we've, we've laid out in front of us. Right, so if you wanted to put a label on this, this is a hybrid or Euro. <laughs> but if you wanted to do that. Um, <laughs> um, it's, uh, it looks abstracted, but it's actually quite thematic, especially the way the battle system uh, works which is actually where the game shines, I think. It's, one, it's the, quite distinctive, I think. Uh, it's similar to some other uh, games, but um, I haven't seen something like that. Um, the theme is um, the 6th through 11th century uh, AD. It's the Mediterranean Basin. I'm sure a lot of gamers have seen this shape <laughs> before. Uh, but it's actually uh, the only uh, Byzantium-themed Euro game ah. that I know of. Um, there's a geek list out there that lists uh, Byzantine, Byzantine games. Um, and a lot of them are Avalon Hill war games, um, quite complex. But this is actually something uh, where you can play with the family. It's not that complex. Um, right. Um, I'm just going to go over the general idea. Yes. Please. And Lefteris knows more about the details, and we'll fill you in on that. <laughs> um, so there's the map. There is uh, several areas. Um, there are four empires: the Byzantine Empire, the Holy Roman Empire, the Saracens, and the Moors. Uh, and this is the story of their conflict in those centuries. Um, each empire has a number of areas. Uh, they each have their capital, um, the which is indicated by the three coats triple, of arms. Triple yeah. arms, yeah. Yes, correct. Uh, several large cities, um, indicated by two shields, and some smaller cities with one shield. Um, there's three units for each empire. Think of them as leaders uh, that lead their armies into battle. Uh, there is the emperor. Here, we'll actually flip those on their side yep. so people right. can see. There is the general, um, who is a little bit more flexible in battle and has a little bit more skills. Uh, and there is the admiral, which obviously moves uh, around the seas. Um, there are several uh, er uh, dotted lines that indicate that you can move land units from uh, area to area. Uh -huh. And then the general, uh, the admiral, can move from any uh, for example, the Western Empire, the Eastern Empire is going to move from any red port to any red port. Okay. Like that. He'll explain more about the movements uh, later. Um, so that's basically it. Um, the strategic game is very simple, um, but it gets quite involved when you get to the tactics of it. Um, there is some diplomacy. It's not a big part of the game, uh, and that's done with money. You bribe various <laughs> people and you. Uh, Basically, you fix problems with money. <laughs> that's basically it. And you create problems with money, All right, which well, is you know, my favorite easy. thing to do <laughs> yeah. in this game. Um, yeah, uh, perhaps you can tell us about the units. Yeah. Uh, every, uh, first of all, I want to say that every empire have from the beginning of the game uh, about 50,000 soldiers to command them and to put it, divide it in these uh, three military units and four with a garrison that we will see in the battle. So this. Yes. With these symbols, we explain the the parts of the, the military units, and this is the guys. <laughs> a, a not so important so, unit. <laughs> so when you when you move your uh, king, then automatically you have this. Move the whole army. Okay, so basically it's all the troops that move with it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, so these cards are moving with this, and you make the battle with this. Okay. That okay. Make sense? So, for example, this king versus uh, that general will be fighting yes. this uh, unit this against his the, exactly pile for the general. In the according so, pile. Yeah. Against this. Then and this here, is allocated so at the beginning of uh, some of the rounds. Four times in the game, you'll allocate your army to the uh, so you leaders. So you have the chance to switch up who controls yes, what Yes, group. four times in the game, you'll okay. be able to do that. Um, and uh, that secret, it's face down. Um, and then you're supposed to make mixed armies. So you can't have two units of cavalry or two, art, two infantry, etc. So you try to mix it up. And it's actually a good thing because they have different uh, abilities to take advantage of terrain. But we'll explain that during the battle system, which we can actually do now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, let's assume that the... Um, oh, hang on. We have a B on okay. the board. Uh, it's not designed for bees. I've never seen uh, a bee in here. Good omen, good omen. It's a good omen, yes. <laughs> in Greece, we traditionally think of a bee on a board game. As a, uh, all right. Yeah. <laughs> All right, um, so let's have an example yeah, okay. of, uh, for example, the um, Byzantine general attacking a neutral area, mm -hmm. for example, or would you like Venice? Okay. Yes, yes, okay. Yeah, attacking Venice, which belongs to the, uh, to the Holy Roman Empire. They've conquered, they've made a campaign around. And so I will pick up the um, Byzantine uh, general, which I've allocated before. And I will pick it up the, the garrison of the Holy Roman Empire. So okay. he picks the infantry, basically, the garrison, indicated by the castle. Uh, and as the attacker... Well, here, we wanted to... We, yes, so we can right. zoom in on yeah, this, right. so we'll move the board out so, of the way, so you guys First of all, I will look at uh, my units. The units are very, very simple. So you'll have the name, the number, um, and then the quality of those units. Some are uh, trained. For example, they have one sword on their coat okay. of arms, and some are uh, veteran or elite units. Right, uh, and I will propose to the uh, defender uh, two terrains that we can fight the battle in. So I will attack and I will say, I will take a look at the relative um, ability of the units to take advantage of their end. So for example, in planes I have 4, 5 and 2, so 11. And in ambush I have 4, 5, 2, 4, uh, 5, 4, 2, 11, um, which is 11 in either case. So I will propose plane or ambush to him. And, and he will look at his own units I made and my, choose my move as a defender, so I choose ambush. We put the ah, token of ambush. Yeah. ambush? And this is done uh, secretly, by okay. the way. Um, this is done because it increases interaction between the players and it's not just up to whoever's attacking. The mm. defender can throw a uh, curveball there and they're able to take advantage of the terrain. Historically, the defenders had more choice right. in battle. Right, having more so, familiar with the terrain. Um, first of all, uh, if I have any uh, offensive bonuses, uh, indicated by the experience of uh, the uh, various uh, uh, commanders. So, for example, if my general was here, I would have two, um, two bonus. Uh, uh, exactly, and it will, makes very smart decisions. Yeah, having and lots then of experience I will on take the these uh, tokens, and after I allocate my units in this battle formation, I will allocate the bonus points uh, for uh, the battle, and that applies to the how well the uh, leader can take advantage of the terrain. Um, after the attacker, then the defender put opposite of the attacker. Make the formation. They put every new every garrison have one fighting point modifier. So every Add. shield, for example, gives a bonus okay. uh, if it's just uh, them there. Um, and then there could also be minuses. For example, um, if the admiral is inexperienced, then he has minus two, and those count as minuses. So uh, let's, let's do battle. Okay. Um, so we reveal them one by one, okay. and we first uh, decide who has used the terrain better. So we are fighting in ambush. There's a right, uh, so friendly little marker to explain it. Comparing ambush, ambush. I'm guessing. Yeah, mm -hmm. correct. The attacker wins this battle because I have four minus one goes to three. Yeah. I have two fighting point per battle. Then one goes here. One zero. All right. Second battle, second combat. We have. I have five. Goes to six. It's a. Yeah. Right. It's a positive. Uh, I take this combat. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then the third one? And the third one. I have four, you have five. So it's two one to me now. All right. So the important thing to do is remember uh, the rule of three. There's just three things you need to check out. It's very simple. You do this, the terrain. Yep. Then you check the army size. 
the Army size, the Saracen have 6,000, 5,000, the Saracen, sorry, 6,000, 5,000, and 1,000, 12,000 all together. And we account the Holy Roman Empire. Ah, but your army is bigger at 15,000. So in battle size also matters. Larger armies have more options and just rushing into battle. The score became cool too. And the final stage is the training of the army, the total training of the army. So yep. uh, we'll see that the Saracens have two swords and the, total, yeah. the sun, yes, and they also two swords have the Holy Roman Empire. So it's the, a tie. It's a tie. In this case, the attacker wins the battle. So it's one of the few games Venice, where actually the attacker has an yeah. advantage. <laughs> it's, it's not on purpose to encourage interactive play and people not turtling in their areas. This is the. That's, that's the core of the game. That's the fun part of the game. Yeah, and I, I can see why that is a system that's definitely simple yeah. enough that, that younger players could, could easily pick exactly. that up. Exactly, and in fact, this is actually a mini-game in itself. You can just play that as a tactical <laughs> card game. I mean, hey, why not? Yeah. Uh, it's it's, uh, it's kind of like Pocket Battles or Battle Line or something yeah, like that. Yeah, I was going to say, actually, so but it reminded me a bit of Battle Line. Yeah, mm -hmm. me too, when I played it. Yeah, exactly. So um, the battle system includes all the elements of the real battle. We have the battle for points. We have the army. The terrain. The total of the, the, the size. We have the large of the army. The, the train of the army. Also, we have the experience of the commander. Of the commander. So the uh, garrison is uh, have uh, the commander of garrison. Have, we see that have one fighting point for the ferro or less. So it's a combination of all of these parts of the battle. And uh, when a commander uh, loses a battle. They gain. They learn from their mistakes, hopefully, uh, and they gain. Uh, they go down this track. Ah. Uh, I hope you can see that. Yeah. There we go. They go down this track, and um, they get more bonuses near the end. So it helps a little bit to uh, allay the runaway leader problem. So whoever has lost has learned. Uh, and, and gives a balance in the game. Yeah. Nice. I lose, but I win. Well, and actually, we haven't talked about that. How do you win? How do you win? <laughs> well, how do you win? Okay. In every battle, you have some uh, bonuses, some extra victory points, and some uh, treasury points. And in the end of the game, we account all the immediately all the points of the game, and the winner is the man who have uh, collected the most uh, victory points in the game. You get some bonuses from controlling a certain number of areas mm -hmm. and for saving your money a little bit, yeah. not spending it. Also, much. the economic management is very important because in the end of the game, we account then the Gold coins, gig, yeah. gig golds, the gig golds. Yeah. That's, that's the word that we use actually. Gig gold? No. Right. <laughs> so if you win extra or lose extra victory points based on your uh, economical management. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and you can use the money in several ways. Uh, you can uh, help. The Admiral, for example, mounts campaigns further away. The normal range is this, right. but you can send him off to the, the uh, western side, ports yeah. exactly, to do battle there and attack areas. Um, and um, you can, you can also use it in diplomacy. You can uh, try to declare truces, uh, to arrange a truce, or uh, well, uh, better yet, <laughs> which is my favorite part of this, um, you can pay off uh, some um, uh, raiders to come and raid the opponent. <laughs> so uh, the uh, Saracens or the Byzantines can pay the uh, Armenians to uh, raid the opposite side. And in fact, <laughs> the other players can contribute to that payment. And I'm guessing there's a opposing They can't initiate one. it. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. They can't yeah. initiate it, but they can contribute to it. It's a little backdoor funding. Exactly, exactly. Uh, and various other things. You can uh, pay some money to spy a little bit on the opponent's cards during battle, or uh, you can yeah, make extra moves. Also, now, before the beginning of every battle, mm -hmm. of every round, you have in the yeah, historical of the yeah. game that gives you some orders that you must do uh, in the current round. And I, I'm so. guessing a, a literally following. I love games that actually have ties yeah. to, yeah, to yeah. history. Uh, and then there's this is a historical part, and if you're just a gamer that gets headache after a lot of text, you, you only need to read the bolded part, <laughs> and, you know, for the thematically challenged among us. And this is the historical notes that I made the game. Mm. This is the historical notes that I made the game. Now, which actually I think is a great segue because not only do we have sort of this all yes, this historical yes. background, but we also, because we were talking about this before we went on camera, the that this was not produced and manufactured in, in Germany, yes. but in Greece. Yes, that's right. And we were commenting, we just wanted to point out, because I was just as impressed with this too, there's a few of the finishing qualities to this yeah. that were really impressive. There is a, um, a marble 
texture, almost like a leather texture to this, yeah. although you can't feel it. But there is sort of a leather texture to the player's aid here. And, and this, by the way, is the mini expansion, which adds some generals for the neutral layer. Oh, even, even better. Even yeah. better. Yeah. Um, and likewise, the box, which, you know, linen finish is very popular right yeah. now, but this is more of a, a leather finish to yeah. it. It actually has a, a pebbled yes, texture to right. it. Um, and then the last thing that we were talking about, which now we get to totally wreck your board. Here we go. Yeah. That's is, fun. This is all image. Uh, here, we'll flip it around yeah. so it'll be right side off with that fantastic battle image on the yeah. back just for kicks. Uh, a lot of people, like me, think that it's a if waste. If you do not like so, the game, it's a yeah, make you, it busted. Yeah, if you don't like <laughs> no, it, put not? it on the wall. Yeah. 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 You know, I, and I actually have framed game boards yeah. in, in, my, uh, in my game room, so yeah, I actually totally, <laughs> totally get that. <laughs> and made in Greece. Uh, okay. Very well made in Greece. The only thing that wasn't was is the wooden components. From Germany. Yeah, that came from Germany. But uh, we're very happy that um, this was able to be done in Greece. Yeah. Um, and we encourage people to look into that uh, to see if they can make the game there yeah, also. Yeah, absolutely. I know. We've got a pretty good insert here for all yeah. your all your bits. Yeah, exactly. And that same, oh, I just love this yeah. box. Gosh. <laughs> okay. Anyway, <laughs> awkward. <laughs> All right, well, I thank you both so much thank you. for stopping by thank you very and much. showing us Autocrator. Our pleasure. Thank you. Our pleasure. Thank you.